inspiring today's draft is Taysom Hill's unique skill set. The best gimmick players in NFL history, Chris. You've got a question for me. If I get it right, I get the first pick. And my first pick will not be Taysom Hill, by the way. I, I, I hope not. You know, I mean, you know, for the spirit of the draft, that should not be your first pick. It should be against the rules. In fact, we should be able to pick him in general right now, I think, all together. But either you way, make here this we go. The Taysom, the Taysom Hill Memorial Draft? I think that's so. How we, I think that's, that's what we do, do whenever it. we take a guy out. All right. It's the Taysom yeah. Hill Memorial Draft, even though he's still alive. Go ahead. All right. Cool. Good. All right. I like that. We got enough options. All right. Who has the longest run by a quarterback in NFL history? Who has the longest Terrell run? Terrell Pryor, 90 yards. Terrell Pryor, 90 wow. yards for the Raiders. 93 Boom. yards. But good job, Close man. Enough. I was really right. – I'm impressed. Way to go. All right. You know who was against? Uh, I can still remember it against the Jets and the Meadowlands, I think. I believe that was the day it happened. Maybe I'm wrong. I just remember. I could be wrong. I, I don't know. I thought it was at home. I thought it was home. You might be I right. I think it is infield. at home now that I'm thinking about it. He, he ran through that crappy infield that we'll never have to see again. Okay. Um, it was against the Steelers, Pete Demolitis says. Ah, All right. There we go. This one's easy. The all-time gimmick player. Uh, one of the cornerstone members of the Chicago Bears of 1985. He took yeah. not just the football world by storm. He was a crossover cultural icon. William the Refrigerator Perry, all 300 plus pounds of him. He's a guy who looked like he was 500 pounds, even though he wasn't much over 300 pounds. Back in those days, there weren't as many 300 pounders. But uh, running the ball out of the backfield, I think he caught a pass at one point in a Monday night football game against the Packers. But but it captured the imagination of people beyond the normal football fan. It, it was, a, it was a, a dream come true for the NFL in the mid eighties because it got those casual Super Bowl fans engaged in the 85 bears weeks before they otherwise would have been paying attention because everybody was talking about William, the refrigerator, Perry, the all time great NFL gimmick player, Chris. Yeah, that's, that's tough to go against. I mean, it really is. Uh, that's the guy that I wanted to pick first. That's why I was mad you got that question right there. But either way, that's, that's kind of where it started, right? I mean, that was the first guy that I, when I was growing up watching football, that was really played out of position in an interesting way, in a gimmicky type of way, either way. And, uh, you know, that, it was cool. It really was. And we're seeing it a little now, right? I think the, the Bears, Akeem Hicks, they got him doing a little bit of that the last few years, playing fullback for them. He scored the uh, he scored the touchdown in Super Bowl twenty that should have gone to Walter Payton and that spike he like he he cranked up for it two or three times and it was not a spike he threw the ball out of the screen I don't know if it ever even hit the ground uh, but uh, the 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 fridge the fridge was so, you know it was one of those years and every year there's some theme that pops up and there's something that makes it unique and special from every other year in eighty five it was the Bears and it was Refrigerator Perry and and. Uh, in many respects, there's been nothing else like it since then. All right, you're up. No, no. That was a, a team with great personalities. All right, I'm going to Slash. All right? I mean, Slash, when I was, you know, in high school, Cordell Stewart, Pittsburgh Steelers, hadn't seen anything like that. What? This college quarterback's playing receiver. He's playing running back. He's playing quarterback sometimes. They're trying to groom him into the future quarterback, whatever it may be. I mean, hey, he's a guy – he was a big part of that Super Bowl team that lost to the Cowboys in Super Bowl 30 there because of his ability to do those slash type plays. You know, so he was the first guy I really remember, you know, on that side of the ball that started doing multiple things on the offense. You know, the, the, that vast, you know, difference as far as running back receiver. I think he even did some punting, too, if I remember correctly. So. There really wasn't anything Cordell Stewart couldn't do. He's a phenomenal athlete. He was a big part of that Pittsburgh Steelers organization for, for uh, a big chunk in time and, and certainly made some plays in his time there. And you know what? At, at one level, he, he, he kind of proves my point as to Taysom Hill that a guy who does a bunch of things before he becomes a starting quarterback can still be a great starting quarterback. But I, I, I don't know how great Cordell Stewart was. You know, he had moments in his career, and I think with him, it was a very gradual building of his confidence, and it was something that happened slowly 
and surely, and then something that would, would happen that would shatter his confidence and he would be back down in the valley again. And you'd have to build it up slowly. He went through that two or three times during his time as a starter, Chris. And uh, really, until they turned the page on him and went with Tommy Maddox in 2002, the Steelers gave it a good three or four years before they, they decided he couldn't be the guy. Remember, he ended up in Chicago for a little while and then right. kind of washed out of the league. But uh, he had his chance. And uh, it was special. 1995 slash that was uh, that was, again, like like the fridge 10 years earlier, a guy who took the NFL by storm. All right. Next one for me. And uh, this really was a gimmick. It was the start of something that that became a trend in the NFL for a few years. And it was something born out of desperation. The 2008 Miami Dolphins, after a couple of games, could not move the football. They were desperate to come up with ways to move the football. And on the way home from their, their loss in week two, they had a conversation. I think it was David Lee, the former college coach, said, let's do the Wildcat. And they had a conversation with the offensive players. And uh, they, they asked the, the non-quarterbacks, anybody uh, uh, have any history throwing the football and want to try to run quarterback in this thing? And Ronnie Brown put his hand up and the rest is history. Because they went into New England the following week and they obliterated the Patriots on their own floor in their own building, 38-13, to 13, Ronnie Brown ran roughshod over the Patriots. He had four touchdown rushes that day and a touchdown pass to Anthony Fasano. Five total touchdowns from Ronnie Brown in the birth of the Wildcat, even though the Wildcat d- dates back years earlier. They brought it back. It became a thing in the NFL for several years after that. It still shows up in the Madden playbooks, even though nobody really uses it anymore. But Ronnie Brown, even though it didn't last long, it burned very brightly, and on that day in September of 2008, the, the Patriots got burned by it big time. Yeah, well, you know, it was the first time we had seen a team, I feel like, go all in on it a little bit. Like, you're right. We had seen it before then, but that was the first game where we went like, damn, there's like a full game plan of this stuff. This is unreal. And we are still seeing it, Mike. You know, hey, whether it's Taysom Hill or, you know, hey, think about Travis Kelsey. He lined up a quarterback in the Super Bowl and ran for a first down in the Wildcat. You know, I think he did that two different times. So it it has become a little bit of a, you know, a wrinkle aspect of every good play caller's play sheet to where they have a few plays like that. It's great schematical advantage, you know, as far as getting that, having one extra blocker in the run game that really puts a defense in a tough spot. So uh, that was, that was unbelievable. I can still remember seeing that going, wow, you know, Belichick and the, the Patriots are flustered. They don't know what hit them. Okay, um, Deion Sanders will be my next pick. Yes, Deion Sanders. I don't care that he was the best corner to ever play football. He also had a gimmick aspect to him. I mean, yeah, kick returner, punt returner, we know that. But dude could play some wide gimmick, rec- though. Wait a minute. I'm throwing challenge flag. Don't uh, gimmick. It, it's not a gimmick. You just picked a guy that played pick, running kick, back kick returner, and nothing else. Returner. Be quiet. You just picked a guy that played running back and nothing else. But he else. was quarterback. He was quarterback okay. in the Wildcat option. In the and, Wildcat he, formation. and how many throws did Go he ahead. have? Three? I mean, Deion Sanders probably had as many throws as he did in his career. So relax. Hold on. Go because ahead. he also played receiver. All right? He played receiver a lot. He's got playoff I think catches. he played he, receiver so much, you can't call it a gimmick. He caught 36 oh. passes in 1996. That's not a gimmick. That, that's, a, that's a part-time job at that point. No, nah, no. He's a gimmick. That's what it is. You're mad that I picked him, and it's a great pick by me. And they put him in there to run reverses and deep balls, and he caught a bomb in Super Bowl 30 from Troy Aikman, and I can still remember sitting there watching that. So, hey, whatever you want to say. I mean, the guy had versatility, and you could use him in gimmicky-type ways. You jerk, okay? He's far more gimmicky than Ronnie Brown. So deal with it. He had 36 catches for 475 yards in 1996. By far, that was his biggest output. The rest of his career, it was more sporadic, and he didn't do much more gimmicky, by way of playing receiver after yeah. that. So, stop, <laughs> stop it. Uh, I'm looking for any th- – he did throw two <clears throat> career passes, one with the Falcons, one with the Cowboys, both – were incomplete. So that would make his passer rating 39.6. If you throw an incomplete pass, no interceptions, no yardage gained, 39.6 is your rating. All right, next one for me. Hmm. Hmm. I, hmm. Uh, hmm. I, I, I guess I got to go Mike Vrabel. I got to go Mike Vrabel because when I think of the Patriots in their 
first iteration when they won three Super Bowls in four years. And I, and one of the one of the uh, images of Mike Vrabel catching a touchdown pass in a Super Bowl game is actually on the cover of the NFL record in fact book, which only me, Peter King, and Chris Magdog Russo now possess every year. But uh, Vrabel, the linebacker, and, and he, he caught so many touchdown passes, you almost have to argue it wasn't a gimmick anymore. But um, he, 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 uh, he had plenty of work catching touchdown passes from Tom Brady, especially in big moments, Chris. Well, it was a natural, you know, like, like looked like a tight end, moved like a tight end, caught the ball effortlessly. Yeah, and it just seemed like in playoff football and Super Bowls, you always had to be worried about Mike Vrabel. They were going to find a way to get him the ball. So I'm with you. That was a guy that was on my list. Certainly. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's more than a, you know, a gimmicky guy can catch tight end, you know, catch passes, tackles people can coach teams. Holy cow. He's got it all going. He's very talented individual there. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I don't know what, I guess ultimately here. All right. I wanted to pick somebody from the modern day, like right now, but how can I not pick George Blanda? I mean, I, George Blanda is a guy like I never even saw highlights of, and even before I was even aware of who he was as a young kid, I remember people talking about, oh, George Blanda, he can kick it and throw it and do everything for your football team. I mean, George Blanda, his statistics, you know, I mean, it's 98% or 99% extra point kicker, above 50% field goal kicker, let alone being a really damn good quarterback to go along with that. Uh, I don't know. That to me is a special skill set right there. So eat yeah, that I'm one. dropping the challenge flag again. No, no, you eat that one. You're picking a guy from an era where they played both ways. They did everything. They had 15 guys on the team. So not everybody that did gimmick. that. You're that's wrong. just the that's, way it was. That's no, just the it way wasn't. it was. We guys wouldn't were talk kickers. about guys Sammy like Chuck Ball Benaric was a punter and, and a defensive back. They were all doing it. No, they weren't. And either way, it doesn't take away from his vast skill set. So uh, eat it. I don't like you. You should. You should have taken uh, Doug Flutie for his drop kick. Uh, that that would have been my next one if there was another round or uh, if you had taken all mine. The, uh, the remember the drop kick for Doug Flutie for the extra point. I do. That counts yes, as a gimmick. Just, that was great. I didn't know right, if that classified as enough gimmick for you, Mister Lawyer. So I didn't want to pick we're, that. We're, we're running out of time. We got more PFT Live coming at you right after. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.